This is the Voice for Real Estate podcast. Whether you're buying a home, building a home, or designing a home, you'll meet the local experts who can provide all the information you need in every episode of Voice for Real Estate. And be sure to subscribe, share, and comment so you don't miss a single episode of Voice for Real Estate. Here we are again at Voice for Real Estate. I'm so honored to have Lori here from uh, Dunes Properties. And uh, Lori, I, I just can't tell you how much I appreciate you being here. Uh, you know, everybody's talking about the real estate market. Um, but before we go there, let everybody know about you. What, tell me about your background and, and, and how long you've been in the business. Well, I actually graduated in the mid 80s from the College of Charleston and left and went to Hilton Head and got in the real estate business there. Um, and have really, other than about a three-year sabbatical in the stock market, have been consistently selling real estate for developers, general real estate, um, you know, new construction, work with builders. So I do have a vast background in different types of real estate. It's not just general real estate. And I do think that does help when you're selling, you have some knowledge of construction, you have knowledge of the builders that have good reputations and ones that, you know, you would promote to your clients. Something you have that a lot of the agents don't have is, I, I believe from the stock market to the time you got in real estate, were you not in the mortgage business for some time? Um, I was. That's how I got back to Charleston. Um, I did work in the uh, mortgage business and did jumbo loans, a lot of high-end loans, but also did construction loans and lot loans. So all of those are tools in the toolbox that help me, you know, help my clients and find the best loans possible if they're looking to do a loan and the best terms. I mean, we're seeing a lot of people right now doing interest only loans. You can get a fi fixed year, 10 year fixed rate for, um, you know, three and a quarter percent on an interest only loan with a 30 year amortization, which is crazy cheap for people to get in this market. Man, everybody's talking about real estate. So let's just continue the conversation here at Voice for Real Estate. And what do you think about this market? Or what do you think is going on with it? <laughs> Yeah, it's not a day that somebody doesn't ask me to talk about the real estate market for sure. <laughs> it, it is definitely the um, the most challenging market I've ever worked in due to the lack of inventory. We usually have 10,000 homes or more for sale all the time in Berkeley and Char Charleston County. Um, we have 1,500 now, so about 15% of what we're used to, which makes for a extremely competitive market. And a difficult one because there are many days that, you know, we're seeing multiple offers and it's always sad to call your buyer and tell them they didn't get the, you know, they didn't get the house of their dreams. Now, I always believe that they get the house they're supposed to get and there's more than one house of someone's dreams. But, it, you know, we're seeing um, where experience does matter in agents, knowing how to position the strongest offer that you can position doing things like escalation clauses where you're willing to go higher than the highest offer up to a per certain percentage, which positions your clients very well to get the house they want. Do you typically put an escalation clause in your contracts, Lori? If I know that there are going to be multiple offers, um, yes. And it depends on the price that you would go anywhere from 1% to 5% of an escalation up to a certain amount. So we are seeing that and it is effective if your clients have the stomach for it and they really want the house. Let's talk to the buyers and the sellers that are listening to us now. Um, what does this market mean to the buyer? What does that buyer have to do right now to be successful? You have to be ready to make a quick and effective decision. You have to be strong with your offer. You have to have your financing in place. If you're going to get a mortgage, you have to be willing sometimes to um, make up some money if the house doesn't appraise. Some uh, multiple offers are getting into no appraisal contingencies, no financing contingencies. So the stronger you can make your offer, the better. Listen to the listing agent. If your buyer's agent is listening to the listing agent, they will give you hints of what matters to the sellers. And if it's something as easy as changing the closing date or letting them rent back or do something, I would encourage you strongly to incorporate what the seller is looking for just to elevate your offer to the top, you know, to the top of the list. And no due diligence. You know, if you're if you're putting due diligence in, you're probably getting in the you're gonna be in a different stack than the people who are doing repair addendums. Well, I know how wise you are about the real estate market from knowing you for so many years. So this is a market, uh, as you said earlier, and a, a seasoned 
uh, agent will will bl- prosper. And don't you think? I do. I, I think that um, you know we're always disappointed when we don't get every deal or we don't get everything closed. But you know, you, you want things to stick. You want people to follow through on their contracts and close and be happy in their homes. And it, it is, you know, there there are some people that do act quickly that sometimes have second thoughts, and that's causing some angst. We're seeing a lot of backup contracts for that reason. Um, and we're seeing, you know, seller remorse. Every seller thinks they've sold too cheap and every buyer thinks they've paid too much. That's probably a standard <laughs> script, is it not? Um, pretty much. It's talking a lot of people off the ledge on a daily basis. I've got to say, you know, over the years, uh, My Pleasant Magazine has published the top 10 homes sold in specific neighborhoods. It's always a great read. People like reading it. And Laura, you're always on one of those lists, or if not several of those lists. Tell me what you're doing right to get on those top 10 lists. Now, these are the most expensive homes sold. For instance, Ion, you're always on that list. How do you how do you make that happen? What do you do? From starting in the beginning when we were developing lots to building homes, I've watched the appreciation in ION, and I think it's been a very consistent. Even after 9-11, it was a three-month blip, you know, even after the stock market corrections. It's, it's a steady, you know, appreciation in here. And somebody's got to push the envelope. You know, if, if everybody's content with the status quo, prices are never going to go up. And, you know, recently... Um, we broke the $3 million mark in I am. We've got two houses under contract in here for $3 million. That's never happened before. Did you do that? Did you break that barrier? Um, I did not. I just, I did not. (laughs) Um, I've got a new listing coming that will break that barrier when it sells. And I recently sold a house off the water for probably a record, which was in the high twos. Let's talk about the lifestyle because you really like that neighborhood and you live there. But what is it about the lifestyle that's so compelling? Well, I think the first thing is location, location, location. It, it certainly has appreciated the way it has because it's so close to downtown. It's foot of the bridge. It's easy to get everywhere. and People love the location. The second thing is the people. I mean, COVID, I, I've met so many nice new people that have moved here in COVID and love living in Ion because we have all this outdoor space. We have a two-mile marsh walk. We have lakes. We have walking trails, you know, all of this stuff going on. And people can be outside. And people gen- generally are very friendly and looking to make friends. There's 762 homes in here. And, you know, we have a standard turnover about 10% per year, which is the national average. So everybody's sort of new. There's always people new to the neighborhood. And that makes it easier to make friends and just really enjoy your neighbors. So the national average is is about 10 percent of of homes in each neighborhood. Right. Of course, that'll vary by neighborhood. But on a national basis, that's about the average. That's correct. <laughs> You're a pet friendly agent. Well, Lucy just walked in and they barked at Lucy. So, yeah, that is pretty standard for um, national average. We were running at 762 homes, usually in the 50 to 60 range. Last year, we were above 80. The top 10 in 2020 in Ion, I believe you're on that list uh, four times, I think. So congratulations on it. It's awesome. But the big thing, the big news was you sold the most expensive home ever on Sullivan's Island in 2020. Is that correct? That's correct. And what did that go for? And tell us a little bit about the house. Um, that closed at $8.2 million. It was just under 5,200 square feet. It was oceanfront in a very desirable location. I actually um, sold the property to my clients off market. Uh, a longtime attorney, Batman Smith, owned the property, had built a little cottage after Hugo, was not on the market. He was looking to get to Ion. So I knew he would sell it. Uh, my clients came in from New York. We offered, made a good offer. We knew it was important for them to stay in the house till July 4th. They gave them closed, let them stay for free until after the 4th and tore the house down and collaborated with Bo Clowney and Michael Daly to build a really magnificent island. And and what year was that, Lori? That was, uh, they bought the lot in 2013. They closed um, that spring and they actually moved in um I think the end of 15. And so they lived in the house, you know, right at six years and five, five and a half, six years. And 
Um, they have, they were just looking to downsize. I mean, they, you know, they, their children were going off to school and, you know, it was just, they were going to be, and they were looking, but they did stay on Sullivan's Island and bought a house off market to, two rows back so that, you know, they could about throw a rock to their new house from their old house. And the clients, um, where did they come from? They from the Northeast that bought the house? Um, The buyer was from Connecticut. He's a local businessman here now. And the sellers were from New York city. Lori, do you know off the top of your head what the price, uh, uh, route, the route, the price ceiling was until you sold that house for eight, eight point two million? I'm going to walk you through a kind of interesting scenario. In 2013, I sold the most expensive house. It went for $5 million on Station 9. Oh, on Sullivan's that, Island? I did not on, know that. On Sullivan's Island. And that okay. actually held until 2017. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I sold for six point eight seven five. In 2019, a house sold for seven three five on Bayon. And then this sold for eight point two less than a year later, which was over 10%. You know, so we saw a 10% increase. One of the most interesting statistics I've heard, which really sums up our market, is from March 1st of 2020 to March 1st of 2021, the Charleston market has appreciated 37%. There were two years within a five-year period where you sold the most expensive home in Sullivan's Island. Is that correct? I did not. Well, no, from 13 to 21, I sold, I, I broke two records. So seven yes, years. Yeah, okay. okay. The $5 million went. The five million went into eight point two million. That's amazing. That's great. You've got to feel blessed about that, I'm sure. Well, I, you know, I have great clients, and I do really think that the key to real estate is relationships and not transactions, because you cannot be transaction driven in this business. Because if you are, you're going to be disappointed frequently. It, it is really about the relationships you have, and that's what's kind of fun about real estate is you you really never know when that call is going to come in from one of your clients that wants to sell an $8.2 million house or wants to buy to, you know, a a $12 million house. I mean, it's fun to show and do all that, but it's really more rewarding to know that you found your clients the right property. Where do you think this market's headed? What, what, in your, in your opinion, where, where's it headed? Let me check my crystal ball, but (laughs) I definitely think we are going to remain in a very strong market as long as inventory is at record lows and interest rates are low. We're going to see interest rates creep up a little bit, but they're still at all-time lows. Money is very cheap. People have a lot of cash sitting on the sidelines. So I do believe that we're going to stay in a very strong market for the next one to three years. Um, and, And it just, again, it's inventory. I was trying to explain to somebody the other day, the only people putting their houses on the market are people moving to a nursing home, moving out of town, getting divorced, or they they inherited a house that they don't want to live in. You know, so there's people where they used to in Charleston would move every two years to take advantage of the you know the capital gain exemption of five hundred thousand for a couple. Now nobody's putting their house on the market till they have bought another house because they don't want to be out of a house. It's like musical chairs. And one of my clients told me recently, I just want to have a chair when the music stops. Yeah. I'd like uh, to, you were talking about tax laws. That's an important aspect of what you do, especially in the high end market. Um, do most of the clients know the tax benefits in it? Or do you sometimes have to explain those to them? Super wealthy do. And they, they know how to, you know, play the market in their favor, but you know, all, and, and I always, refer people to an accountant who really knows the latest and greatest updates because the laws do change frequently. But, you know, it is important to surround yourself with a team of really good people. And I think that is a key in real estate. I have a long-term team of uh, mortgage lenders, real estate closers, inspectors, you know, people that help me get my job done. I always tell people, you can do the best job ever, but somebody totally out of left field can mess it all up. I mean, if you have a deal that you think is done and when you get a bad inspection or you get an appraisal that didn't come in or you get a lender that's being unrealistic about all these little details he wants for every little thing and the buyer just throw, you know gets mad and throws their hands up. So you're only as good as your team. And that's why I encourage new agents to align yourself with very experienced you know, people that know what they're doing because they'll help you every time. Thanks for being here at Voice for Real Estate Podcast. And like I've said before, we're just continuing the conversation about real estate because everybody's talking about real estate. So, Lori, thanks for being on here. I, I totally enjoyed putting the house you sold on Sullivan's Island on the front cover of the 
current Mount Pleasant Magazine. And until we talk again, thank you very much. Thank you. And my client actually sent me a picture of the magazine in the store, in the newsstand. She was thrilled. So thank you for, you know, all of your good press and what you do. Thanks for watching Voice for Real Estate, where you meet local experts who provide timely information in every episode. Be sure to subscribe, share, and comment. Find Voice for Real Estate online at voiceforrealestate.com.